good morning all so operational amplifier uh, we know that it is a multi stage amplifier containing different stages of amplifiers and the first stage is a differential amplifier and we made a detailed discussion of uh, on the working of differential amplifier so uh, now we are discussing about some of the important properties common to all op amps so the first one is it is a multi stage amplifier with differential amplifier as the first stage okay second one is uh, it have both inverting and non inverting inputs okay so inverting inputs are uh, the terminal where if we uh, where give, if we are giving input to one terminal and the output is 180 degree out of phase then it is inverting terminal and if the output is in the with the same phase in the same phase as that of the input signal then that is called non inverting terminal okay so for every op amp there will be one inverting terminal and one non inverting terminal clear Uh, next one is the input impedance impedance means the total resistance of the op amp the input impedance is uh, almost usually assumed to be infinity that is very very large okay so every op amp have very large input impedance and the output impedance is it o is very low uh, practically less than 200 okay so high very high input impedance and very low output impedance next is a very large open loop voltage gain open loop voltage gain is approximately 10 by to 5 okay so what do you mean by this open loop voltage gain a voltage gain without any kind of feedback if we are not giving any kind of feedback the voltage gain uh, that a amplifier Uh, will give is known as the open loop voltage gain and as it is very high for op amp which is 10 by to 5 clear and there is a voltage gain constant over a wide frequency range that is uh, when you study ce amplifier uh, the frequency response of a ce amplifier there is a constant voltage gain range okay then from that we will take the lower cut off frequency upper cut off frequency and fl minus fh will be so fh minus fl will be the bandwidth so similarly in op amp also if we are drawing the frequency response curve for a wide range of frequency the voltage gain will be a constant that means the bandwidth will be very high for op amps clear now about common mode rejection ratio will be very high or should be very high okay because uh, for uh, good op amps cmrr value Uh, must be very high that means it must have a very good ability to reject common mode signals that is unwanted noise signals okay so uh, for a uh, practical case a cmrr should be very large should be greater than 90 decibel clear so these are some common properties associated with op amps now this is the schematic symbol of op amp okay so here uh, we have two input terminals v1 and v2 so it is denoted as plus and minus this plus and minus uh, they are not the polarity of voltage okay here i put a plus sign that means you have to give a positive voltage at v1 and negative voltage at v2 it is not like that huh? this plus and minus are not polarity of voltage this plus and minus indicates the non inverting terminal and inverting terminal to denote it as inverting we put a negative sign clear so uh, the positive terminal is the this v1 as non inverting input and v2 as the uh, inverting input of an op amp okay and this one this is v out output terminal of op amp okay so here actually this is a two ended input and single ended output clear here we have two inputs so it is a two ended input but we are taking output from only one transistor so it is a single ended output okay but this two ended out input can be converted into single ended how we will give 
voltage are only at one terminal and we are grounding the second terminal then it become a single ended input clear okay so although we have two input terminals we will apply signal voltage only to one terminal and the other terminal will be grounded then it will become a single ended input okay so in most of the cases we will operate our op amp in single ended input and single ended output mode that is we will give input only at any one of the these two terminals uh, only one terminal and we will take output from the other terminal clear now uh, uh, we have studied about the working of differential amplifier please uh, recollect it huh? Uh, <clears throat> that is we have two in in a differential amplifier we have okay here we have two uh, what uh, uh, two transistors and two inputs v1 and v2 okay you are giving input to the first one and if you are taking output from the second transistor then it will be in phase and this will act as a non inverting input okay if you are giving input to one transistor and taking output from the same transistor then it will act as in inverting input clear so this means one uh, the base of one transistor will act as non inverting input and base of the other transistor that is from where you are taking the output that end will act as inverting input and that will be the output clear so that is what we are taking here the if you are uh, the same base the same base of the transistor where we are taking output this end will be the inverting input and non inverting input will be the terminal taken from the opposite transistor the other transistor that will act as a non inverting input then this will be the output clear so this is how uh, op amp is fabricated hmm? now we have two other voltages plus v and minus v okay actually these terminals are the uh, the biasing terminals uh, uh, because in all transistor if a transistor have to work then we will have to give some uh, dc voltage okay for biasing plus vcc and minus vcc so in a differential amplifier also for working of a differential amplifier we should give plus uh, vcc and minus vee okay that is some dc voltages have to be given that is shown here that is plus v and minus v clear that is the external output voltage that have to be given to the uh, op amp <clears throat> okay so uh, usually uh, when we draw the schematic diagram of an op amp we avoid these two terminals mm? we need not draw the plus vcc and minus vcc it is understood but in schematic diagram we for uh, because of the complexity of the in circuit we try to avoid these two symbols clear so this is the schematic diagram of op amp plus is non inverting input and minus is inverting input now uh, the output voltage from an op amp for a given pair of input voltage depends mainly of following factors okay so the output voltage of an op amp mainly depends on some factors the first factor is the voltage gain of op amp okay so um, in the case of voltage gain i told you that the uh, the maximum uh, the voltage gain is the open loop voltage gain of op amp is very very high okay and what is open loop voltage gain open loop voltage gain is the maximum possible voltage gain from an op amp that is without any feedback 
okay so if you are not giving any feedback to the op amp circuit then you will get the maximum voltage gain of the circuit and that is known as open loop voltage gain which is generally greater than 10 raised to uh, uh, greater than 10000 okay so almost uh, we, uh, we i told that it is around 10 raised to 5 okay so uh, open loop voltage gain of an amplifier must be generally greater than 10,000. But in an op amp, usually we use a kind of negative feedback. Okay, so here, uh, uh, what do you mean by negative feedback? Negative feedback means a part of your output signal is fed back to your input signal and in a phase opposition to the input signal okay so there will be a 180 degree out of phase uh, between the input signal and the fed back output signal okay so here to give a negative feedback into our op amp circuit we will use two kinds of resistors that is to the uh, inverting terminal we will give uh, a resistance ri and then we will connect the resistance rf across the output and the inverting terminal that is one part of the output is fed back to the input ter uh, input terminal through a feedback resistance rf okay so here uh, we directly apply our input signal is directly applied to the inverting terminal but if we are giving a negative feedback instead of uh, uh, giving uh, directly to the input signal we will connect a ri a resistance and also one part of output is fed back to the input through a feedback resistor rf now and this uh, output will be 180 degree out of phase with the input then this is known as negative feedbacking okay so negative feedbacking is given through two resistance ri and rf then what will happen to the voltage gain if you are giving a negative feedback what will happen to the voltage gain uh, uh, usually the voltage gain will decrease because uh, the output is the fed back the output is 180 degree out of phase shift input so normally the output will reduce and thus the uh, uh, voltage gain will also reduce okay so now this is known as a closed loop voltage gain because the voltage gain with a feedback is known as a closed loop voltage gain and now this transistor is acting in a closed loop manner okay and the voltage gain will be a closed loop voltage gain which is less than the open loop voltage gain clear okay so um, the uh, so what is the use of this actually uh, in most of cases our aim is to get a maximum gain maximum voltage gain but using a negative feedback we are reducing the voltage gain so what is the use okay we will discuss it later so please understand about the voltage gain in an op amp we are using negative feedback and we have to take the closed loop voltage gain which is usually less than 10,000 clear now the second factor that is affecting our output voltage is the polarity of the input and output relationship polarity okay that is uh, if you have uh, two signals okay uh, one signal can be positive and one signal can be negative i told you that this plus and minus doesn't indicate you have to give positive voltage at this terminal and negative voltage at this terminal okay the polarity is independent of these two signals the polarity depends on us what voltage we are giving okay for example if you are giving plus 4 voltage to v1 and plus 2 voltage to uh, uh, v2 then what will be the output the output will be uh, it will be proportional to 
v1 minus v2 that is a into v1 minus v2 okay so here v1 is 4 and v2 is 2 so it will be 4 minus 2 which is 2 voltage okay the so our input voltage is v1 minus v2 which is 2 volt clear now uh, then our output voltage will also be 2 uh, positive okay because a into 2 okay so we will get our input voltage is positive and output voltage is also positive now take the second case uh, v1 is 0 volt and v2 is 2 volt plus 2 volt then what will be the input 0 minus 2 the input voltage will be minus 2 volt then what will be the output a into minus 2 volt which is also negative okay so here if the input signal is negative then the output will also be negative now taking the third case v1 is minus 1 v2 is minus 3 then v1 minus v2 will be 2 volt okay if it is 2 volt the output will be also a into 2 which is positive next the fourth case minus 3 and 0 then the input voltage will be minus 3 and output will be negative so the polarity of input and output signal depends upon the polarity of the input signals that we are giving at the inverting and non-inverting terminals okay now the last one is supply voltages supply voltages the voltage that you are given uh, to the uh, op amp that is the for uh, given to the transistors the differential amplifiers for biasing that is plus v and minus v that is the uh, supply voltages okay so these supply voltages are normally equal in magnitude and opposite in sign okay that is plus v and minus v it can be plus 5 and plus 15 and minus 15 uh, plus or minus 15 plus or minus 12 plus or minus 18 that is usually if you, you are taking a, a 10 volt battery then you will connect your positive terminal of the 10 volt battery to plus v and minus uh, negative terminal to minus v okay so that is how you are uh, giving the supply voltages you are applying the supply voltages okay and this supply voltages determine the limit of output voltage of op amp that is uh, okay we have an equation the saturation voltage the saturation voltage means the uh, maximum possible voltage the limit of the voltage plus v saturation of am op amp is plus V supply minus 2 volt and minus V saturation will be minus V supply plus 2 volt. This is the equation for uh, saturation voltage of an op amp. Okay. So, this, this supply voltage, this saturation voltage, uh, for example, you are giving plus or minus 15 volt supply volt. Okay. And your open loop gain is uh, 20,000. Hmm? So, you are applying a plus uh, positive end of a uh, you are taking a uh, battery having 15 volt uh, voltage okay 15 voltage then you will connect the positive terminal of the battery to plus v and negative terminal is connected to minus v okay now your saturation voltage of the op amp will be plus v saturation will be 15 minus 2 that is 13 volt or minus v saturation will be minus 15 plus 2 that is minus 13 volt that is if your supply voltage is plus or minus 15 then your saturation voltage will be plus or minus 13 volt clear so from the supply voltage we are calculating the saturation voltage then if you know the saturation voltage then you can calculate the input voltage that have to be given okay then the input voltage will be v saturation divided by open loop k that is gain is vo by vi okay gain is vo by vi so, if you need the value of Vi, it will be V saturation divided by open loop K. 
okay so here v saturation is 13 volt and your open loop gain is 20000 uh, just an example then the v in will be 650 microvolt okay so if you know the value of your supply voltage and the gain of your op amp uh, that is the gain of not your op amp the gain of your differential amplifier uh, uh, gain of not your differential amplifier all the multi stages amplifier the total gain of the system then from that you can calculate the saturation voltages and from saturation voltage you can calculate the input voltage that have to be given okay so from that i have calculated a 650 microvolt as the input voltage and your differential input that you are giving to your input exceeds this vn then this op amp will be driven to the saturation region it will not be no longer active okay that is the input voltage that you have to be given should not exceed this v that is it should not exceed the 650 microvolt you have to apply the input voltages which is less than the 650 microvolt okay if you are applying your input voltage greater than the 650 microvolt then it will be driven to a saturation region and the device will no longer become a linear it will become a non-linear circuit what do you mean by linear and non-linear circuit the output vo is a into v1 minus v2 okay that is vo is proportional to v1 minus v2 it is a linear case it is the equation like a straight line okay so it is linear but if our transistor is in uh, our op amp our differential amplifier is driven to a saturation region then this linear equation is no longer valid it will become more complicated and the output equation of the output signal will be, will become non-linear some additional terms will be there which will make the equation make the circuit more complicated so if you want to operate a differential amplifier in a normal linear manner then the input that you have to be given should not exceed should be less than the v input value that is v saturation divided by AOL. clear so three conditions are there the three conditions are first one is the voltage gain voltage gain is we are, we are using negative feedback so the, we have to consider the closed loop gain okay next second one is polarity of the signal uh, polarity depends upon the polar polarity of the input signal depends upon the polarity of v1 and v2 if the input is positive output will be positive input is negative output will be negative okay last one is supply voltage the supply voltage uh, from the supply voltage we can calculate saturation voltage from that we can calculate the input voltage so if the differential amplifier input is greater than this input value then it will become it will be driven into a saturation region clear so <clears throat> the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that uh, Although you are giving this plus V supply plus V volt and minus V volt here, uh, this plus or minus symbol, this uh, does not mean that you have to apply positive voltage to plus terminal and negative voltage to negative terminal. Usually we give plus 15 volt to uh, or plus, plus 9 volt to plus V volt and minus 9 volt to minus V volt or plus or minus 5, something like that. But need not be like that. Okay. That is any voltages can be applied to the either terminal you are, in both terminals you can give positive voltage in both terminals you can give negative voltage that is uh, you can uh, you are applying a plus 4 volt at the positive terminal and plus 2 volt at the negative terminal or otherwise you can give uh, minus 6 volt at the positive terminal and minus 2 volt at the uh, at one terminal it need not be positive terminal 
one terminal can be minus 6 and one terminal can be minus 2 voltage okay so this plus and minus need not uh, mean that you have to apply a positive voltage to positive terminal and negative voltage to negative terminal any voltages can be given and the meaning of this plus and minus v is that a positive voltage applied to the positive terminal drive the output voltage towards the plus v of dc and a positive voltage applied to the negative terminal drive the output towards the negative volt of the dc supply okay that is for example you are giving a plus 4 and a plus 2 then plus 4 voltage is more positive so it can be considered as plus v and plus 2 is less positive okay then it will be connected uh, considered as a negative volt minus v okay so more positive will be plus v and less positive will be considered as negative v then this plus 4 will uh, drive our output more towards a positive dc okay and this less positive that is the plus 2 volt will try to drive the output towards a negative voltage okay but out of this which is high plus 4 is high so the uh, the output will be more driven towards the positive voltage of the supply okay it will be more positive since the positive voltage is high okay so here if you are giving a plus 4 and plus 2 voltage then the positive terminal is more positive potential then the output will uh, swing towards a positive voltage of, of the DC supply okay now if you are connecting a um, minus 6 and minus 2 volt which one is more negative minus 6 is more negative so minus 6 will be the negative terminal and minus 2 which is less negative will act as a positive terminal so out of this which one is high minus 6 is high so the output will be more swing will swing more towards the negative voltage side this is the meaning of this positive and negative voltages okay so need not be uh, when you studied the biasing of uh, transistors uh, you might have studied all the 